our democracy, in the real world, we have rules. Freedom of speech doesn't mean absolute freedom to say anything you want at any point in time everywhere. It comes with a responsibility. It goes, the freedom of one goes to where it infringes on the freedom of another, you know, the freedom from being demonized, the freedom from being abused. And that's why freedom of speech works in the real world democracy, because we have those protections built in. But who and decides those, the protections? But we have decided because we have voted politicians in place yeah. through generations that build up the democracy we live in today. And it's just those same rules we shall make to apply on the internet, because what you're saying ends up in what we're seeing now, which is anarchy. And anarchy is not freedom for everybody. Anarchy is always rule of the bully. And the bully is the mob culture that we see. And if you have, as I have and Yasmin have, been subject to online bullying, um, uh, hacking, undermining, identity theft, you have no doubt that you'd rather have a government regulate than the mobs. Yeah. I, and you raise an interesting point here. Who's the mob? There's a qu another question. Well, I think, Who's the mob? I think the question it's is everything. also, is how much is, is this is new? Me? So we've, we've touched on this point that so we have existing laws that govern these questions in the so-called analog world. Does the digital world, does the internet world require new laws or do the analog laws work? So I'd love to punt this over to you, Nigel. Okay, well, we do have, you know, we do have, and of course we do need laws that uh, govern how uh, we behave in the real world um, and in the digital world. And we have laws, and these laws are equally applicable in the digital world as in the real world. If somebody libels you, you have recourse through, you know, the civil courts. If somebody throws racist slurs at you, there are laws that actually prevent that from happening. The problem, of course, is um, you know, as much as anything, one of practicality. How in practice do we enforce these in a situation where there is so much of this going on all the time, day in and day out? Um, you know, it's not a job for the police. They're not resourced nor configured to do a job like this. The police that we have are there to police us as people. They're not there to police ideas or, you know, or, or, or people's thinking. The technology majors, yes, we are now starting to put pressure on them uh, to do more to improve the quality of, of online discourse. I mean, it, you know, the, it's, it's been a, a depressing uh, experience watching the denial, obfuscation, and uh, general reluctance to accept responsibility uh, for, for the content from which they so uh, manifestly benefit. But we are now starting to get uh, our arms, starting to get our arms around this problem. And certainly in the United States, and I think this does matter because at the end of the day, the USA is still where the weather is made online. Uh, politicians are starting to get to grips with this and we should be encouraging them to do so. And the EU is, is at the forefront and which is why one of the things they hate about the EU because of these freedom warriors thinking the EU. Um, but, but can I make a really important point, which I've only been thinking about in the last three or four days. In, there's a new play that has been written by a young playwright at the Soho Theatre, and it's based on extensive interviews with the community around those three girls in the East End who went off to join ISIS. It's a fantastic play. And it's called, Does My Bomb Look Big in This? It's a great title, too. <laughs> and one of the things that you, there were lots of parents there the night I went to see it. And the number of them said, if only we could do, because what happened was, these girls were like teenagers, a bit discontent, whatever. It was what they saw online that got them into this place where they ended up, and I think two of them have died. So when we talk about the internet, we need to remember some of the really awful things that are coming out of this uncontrollable, out of this uncontrollable space. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.